Well, welcome back to our look at Tucson's changing urban landscape. This is number two in our series. Uh, if you watch that first set of um, uh, that first video that we put out, we discussed a lot of the uh, the foundational pieces of this uh, changing urban landscape. We defined our boundaries as being from the west side through downtown and the university area. And uh, we talked on the first series about a lot of the change makers, things that have happened in the last five or six years that have really um, uh, solidified Tucson as a place of, of growth. And today we're going to uh, start to look at some of the actual projects that are underway. If you hadn't had a chance to watch series one of the video, um, it would give you a little bit more foundation for the conversation here. So I, I recommend that you, you do kind of head back and take a look at that one. We're going to start at the center of Tucson and we're going to uh, look at some of the projects that are, are underway. And one here is um, a very big project. It's um, formerly called La Placita Village. It was those big colorful buildings downtown. Uh, those have come down and uh, this new project is going in uh, here. This is uh, uh, the Flynn, which is uh, going to be 243 apartments, uh, 4,500 square feet of retail, and, they're gonna, and there's actually parking down below. Uh, this particular view is the perspective if you were at the convention center, you had just walked out of the uh, the music hall, this is what you would see. Uh, this view is from Church Avenue. If you were uh, just turning south on Church from uh, Broadway, <clears throat> this is the Flynn. This is an example of one of the remaining buildings that was part of that La Placita village. You kind of get that, that feel there. Uh, and this is the view of the project from Broadway. This is a very interesting view because you, you get a sense of how large this project is. But then you see a couple of things. You see this gazebo that's been there since the 1860s. That was preserved as part of the historic uh, nature of the area, uh, as well as uh, the San Diego house uh, and some, <clears throat> some stables that were there. And then this building was also preserved. This is tucked away in here. This is a little bit of a, uh, an older building. And this building is important because it housed the original El Charo restaurant. So El Charo is the largest family-owned Mexican restaurant, um, the longest-running uh, single-owned family restaurant in the country, very popular here in Tucson. And it started in this area in 1922. It was founded by a woman named Monica Flynn. She was um, of French descent, actually, but she spent some time in Mexico, and she came back and started a very popular um, Mexican restaurant. And uh, this building was owned by her family, the Flynn Building. So when they redesigned this entire project, uh, the name that they chose was the Flynn. I think that's an extremely important decision uh, on, on the developer's part to recognize the history and culture of the area in which this new project sits. Uh, if you were to head down there now, you can see it's well underway. This is one of those things that's well underway uh, and should be completed here towards the end of the year, beginning of 2021. Um, but the project being called the Flynn is important uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, but mostly, in, in my opinion, because of the connections to our past. I think developers today are really recognizing that economic development, is, if, if it's done properly, it's built upon the history and tradition of the area. It doesn't, doesn't destroy it. It, it amplifies it. Because uh, this project replaced La Placita Village. La Placita Village and the convention center were placed on an old neighborhood, El Oyo, that um, uh, was somewhat an impoverished part of Tucson. And we took down that neighborhood to build the, uh, the La Placita Village and the convention center in the late 60s. So that urban renewal wasn't celebrating the history and culture. That urban renewal was, was really burying that history and culture literally and figuratively and uh, under you know, concrete. So now as we're doing development, I think we're being a little bit more aware and conscious of the impact uh, of what we uh, of where we are in history, that we are a product of our past, and and that our future is built upon that past, not in spite of. Um, there's still a lot of hard feelings in the area about uh, economic development, uh, urban revitalization. So we we need to be aware that there are um, uh, more positive ways of celebrating our history and culture. This, uh, if you've been down near the convention center, this is on the on the, the footprint of the um, 
the new fire station well, it's not new anymore but the the most recent fire station one that was built down there near the convention center it's a beautiful uh, facility with a park and a lot of history in it uh, but this was the statues that they put there and it's a woman and i believe her child and they're pointing and if you look at it from their perspective they're pointing at the convention center and the reason they're pointing is because that used to be their neighborhood and so this plaza in which the statue stands is a testament to that neighborhood that talks to, to, tells the story of the, the the people that were there of the businesses that were there um and uh there you know these this woman and her child are pointing to the convention center because they're sad and if you get close enough to her um you can see that she actually has a tear coming down as, as she's looking at where her her home used to be so economic development urban renewal those types of things carry a very um tough message to a lot of uh, Tucsonans that have been here for generations and I think developers are trying um, in, at least in my opinion they're trying in, in, in to do a very good job of recognizing that history and culture so some other projects happening in the urban core I'm not sure if you recognize where this is this is the uh, new hotel it's underway uh, on stone called uh, Hampton Inn in the H2 suites it's Hampton Inn is a kind of your traditional overnight kind of hotel and the H2 suites is the extended stay Hotel at the top with a little pool in here. There's some parking built in. And this is on stone. And if you're trying to kind of place it, uh, this is a view of it from the other side. So this is a view if you're on stone. This is a view if you're on Scott looking over. And you can see where this is. It's actually um, underway. And this is the cathedral. So this building right here is um, uh, th these two hotels will be directly across from the San, uh, San Augustine Cathedral. This is the Scottish Rite Temple, and talked to a few folks there. They're, they're, they're excited to have a hotel where they can actually now be able to hold a national conference. Um, and the folks at Scottish Rite, I think, are, are kind of excited by that, at least the ones that I spoke to. But across the street where the, uh, the cathedral is, here's the cathedral, is this new facility. Uh, this is completed. It was done in April of 2019, so it's a little over a year old at this point. Uh, and this is a community center, uh, parish offices, uh, diocese offices all rolled into one. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful facility. And it took the same footprint of where the old parish hall was for the cathedral. And in creating this massive multi-million dollar project, they made sure that this amphitheater, this metal structure with these very ornate metal flowers was a centerpiece of this new project because this amphitheater was the centerpiece of the old parish hall. So that's an example of developers tying uh, the past uh, to our future. So this entire area was redone and consciously this amphitheater was a big part of that redesign. Uh, this, uh, the, it does actually look like this. This is designed to be a, a pedestrian area. The term you're going to start to hear from people coming to Tucson, I think is, is Cathedral Square. Uh, this is uh, this area here is a lot of a presence from the Catholic Church. So Cathedral Square is uh, going to be a destination, and it's right across the street from uh, the new hotels. This street here, this is a Choa Street, and uh, right over here is where the convention center is. So you've got the community center for Cathedral Square, you've got the convention center, you've got a Choa Street, and then you're going to have the uh, the hotel right across the street from that. So it's going to be another destination area. If you were to go down at Choa Street and you were to stand right about here, you'd be looking at the Marist College. This is uh, what it looks like today. So this is the um, um, community center. Come on down to Choa Street and you're seeing Marist College. This is senior housing. Um, it's got about eight apartments, low income uh, apartments for low income seniors. The significance of this project is that it was the building was saved. This is Arizona's tallest adobe structure and um this is what it looked like a few years ago so it was on the verge of collapse it had to be propped up and, and there was thought of just taking it down but with investment dollars three and away help they were able to create this uh, uh renovation and now it's used for senior housing uh, and they've got a little community center on the bottom floor so from a <clears throat> from a, excuse me from a maps perspective this is the uh, parking lot that is gone and we saw the uh, H2 suites and the Hampton Inn going in here, the Scottish Rite. This is stone, so here's the cathedral. This is the uh, the new uh, community center. This is Marist College. 
Ochoa Street, and then over here is the Convention Center. So if we were to go north just a little bit to the corner here where the diocese offices used to be, those offices were taken down, and in place of that is the Marist. Uh, again, part of this cathedral square concept uh, that you've got there. But this is a uh, housing, again, for uh, low-income seniors. There's 75 apartments. They put parking in here. This project is done, and um, uh, I believe it's full. So looking at that, you're here in the corner of Broadway and Church. That's the Marist. And if we were to kind of go over here to this area, you can see this would probably be what they're defining as Cathedral Square. Um, we'll see how it actually uh, shapes out that way. But this structure here, this is the old Westerner Hotel, and uh, the empty parking lot uh, that used to be there has also been built on. So you've got the old Westerner Hotel. This has been redesigned. This is actually what it looks like now. This is a rendering, but it looks much like this. Uh, you plan to have office space up here and retail down here. I don't believe there's any tenants in there, but the, the structure is done. And then this is a new building. This is the West Point Apartments, uh, 50 apartments for uh, low-income seniors. So in that general area, you've got Marist College, the Marist, and uh, the West Point Apartments, all of which are right along the streetcar route. So if, if you need medical facilities, if you're a senior, you can just walk down to your front door, hop on the streetcar, and you can be at uh, – uh, Banner Medical Facilities um, without really much uh, much effort on, on your part, just getting out that front door. So the uh, the project there is um, the Westerner Hotel is here, uh, West Point Apartments. So we're going to kind of go caddy corner to this uh, empty slot here, which has been built on. Uh, this is a picture of what you can kind of get a sense of what this whole lot was supposed to look like. We have the tallest building in downtown, One South Church. Uh, this pad was developed to create the Twin Tower, uh, but current um, codes and parking requirements would make this too heavy uh, to be on this pad because this pad sits on top of a parking garage. So they have cut this back. Instead of doing a Twin Tower, they put in a, a project called the Rendezvous, which is um, apartments. So these are really high-end uh, apartments, 104 of them, one- and two-bedroom apartments. Uh, they're going to range from 700 to 1,300 square feet. And I believe the last pricing I saw was that at the top end was a little over $3,000 for 1,300 square feet. Uh, this project is mostly complete. You can, If you were downtown, you would see it. It's pretty iconic. It has these triangular ends that kind of jut right out. This is uh, Congress in stone. Uh, this view would be as if you were looking straight at it from the Fox Theater uh, they did keep these um, some of these murals. If you remember that area, they had four Ben's Bells murals. They did keep some of those as part of this project, uh, and then they relocated the others uh, that they did not use. So again, showing respect to uh, to what was there prior to. Uh, if you head over to Rendezvous website, they've got a really nice virtual video of what this project will will look like when it's uh, all complete. And they they have a model open, so they should be they might they're probably already taking reservations for uh, for apartments there. So back to our map. This is the Rendezvous Apartments, and we're going to take a, a little bit of a turn here. We're going to go down Congress, or the, the wrong way on Congress here. We're going to go to this building. This is a place called City Park. Uh, City Park is an was an empty lot for years. Uh, you probably heard the story where Don Bourne got this, I think, for a dollar. Uh, but the right before the recession hit and just there was no money or desire to build anything there. And then as this economic revival is happening in Tucson, uh, they build this beautiful facility called City Park. There are a few different plans for it, but what's really going to end up happening is uh, all of this now is going to be Class A uh, office space, Class A being the top of the line office space. And then the bottom is still slated to be a food hall, a very upscale kind of food court environment where you can get uh, higher quality meals, um, uh, but you you have the opportunity to to work with many different restaurants in there. Uh, it's a great spot uh, if you look at it, these across the country. They're great spots for restaurants to try out new um, uh, new concepts. They might be an established restaurant trying to to dabble in something new. It's also a place for a new restaurant tour to to start, so they don't have the full brick and mortar overhead, uh, but they can um, get their name out. So uh, excited to see what's going to happen here. Uh, the old trading post is being redeveloped as well. And this is all part of City Park. This particular building, this is uh, uh, this is now housed to Hexagon Mining. Hexagon is a global corporation. They've got their interests in all kinds of different types of uh, 
of technologies and um, uh, one of their specialties is in mining. They had a presence in Tucson um, for, for a while and they were going to relocate to Denver uh, partly because the, one of their biggest clients is Caterpillar. And if Caterpillar is going to Denver, they were going to go to Denver. Well, when Caterpillar chose to stay, I think it helped them make the decision that maybe Tucson was the place to stay. So that they not only stayed, but they took their small presence and they took over all of this Class A office space and they turned it into their their mining headquarters, their world mining headquarters. If you go into, um, uh, if you get a, a time to get a chance to tour of this, this top floor here is a, a virtual um, uh, reality paradise. You can see how a lot of their equipment works. You can actually uh, put yourself inside of your own mine. They, they will map it out for you, these fancy cameras, and you can see yourself inside the mine, how all their, their equipment works. And they do a lot to keep uh, things uh, uh, functional, uh, efficient, and safe. So a lot of um, you know trucks moving back and forth, and Hexagon coordinates a lot of that uh, through their software and their technologies. They do they do much more than that. And they got this really cool uh, rooftop deck. So uh, City Park, looking forward to when we can hopefully get into some of these restaurants inside of the uh, food hall. So this is the Hexagon Mining, the City Park building. And uh, we're going to jump over here to this empty lot. This is a parking lot that has been torn up and is now, uh, uh, they did the archaeological uh, research here. And uh, this is, uh, the address of this is 75 Broadway. And that happens to be the name of the project that is slated for there, 75 Broadway. This is a massive, massive uh, undertaking here, mostly with local developers. <clears throat> Other Schwabes and Dab dudes have uh, taken the lead on this. Uh, this is going to be a 19-story project. You've got parking here in the, in the middle floors, two, two levels of retail. Uh, you've got office space and uh, apartments and then a kind of a rooftop um, uh, opportunity for uh, dining and overlooking the city. An interesting piece about it, this is a view of it um, if you're coming down 6th. So this would be Broadway and you're on 6th. So you'd be right here, be Johnny Gibson's. This is the old Chicago store. And you notice that this high rise is complementing. It's, it's actually creating a sort of walking alley between this new retail opportunity and this old retail opportunity. Between the two, uh, what's on Congress and Broadway and what's coming, you've got like 60,000 square feet of retail that can really go on this hub here of Broadway and Congress. It's, it's an interesting design because, again, you have historic and new working together. Uh, and these are the most recent renderings, so I, I, this is most up-to-date is what their plans are, but this is kind of what it would look like from the top. The 19th floor, it has this beautiful restaurant overlooking the city, and uh, very interesting uh, to see how that plays out with uh, our post-pandemic uh, economy. Nearby is uh, the Julian Drew Lofts. This is 44 apartments with uh, some retail on the bottom, and if you're having trouble placing it, this is the carriage house. This is Charo Del Rey, Charo Steak. This is kind of what it looks like today. Carriage house, Charo Del Rey, Charo Steak. Up the uh, mural here. So this parking lot will become the Julian Drew Lofts right there. So from a maps perspective, we've got the Julian Drew Lofts. And if we were to kind of go down Broadway and take a right on 5th, this here, uh, this building, uh, I think it was most recently Planned Parenthood, but this building has been taken down and this is now an empty lot and they're doing some uh, some foundational work for the Julian Drew Apartments. The Julian Drew Apartments are going to be uh, eight stories, 96 apartments. There's going to be ground floor parking. And uh, again, quite, uh, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of a housing for the downtown area. And before we wrap up the downtown, we'll talk about another proposed project, something that's been in the works for some time and is gaining some traction. Now, I understand that these renderings are not the most recent, but I haven't received the most recent ones from the developer, but it, it, this is the concept of it. So if you're trying to figure out what you're looking at, uh, you're at the corner of um, uh, 6th and Congress, but now you're looking to the north and to the to the east here. So this is on the uh, looking at it, and this is what it would look like from per, pretty much the same spot today. This is the old Ronstadt Center, built in the 90s, uh, transportation hub. A lot of buses come through here. And the idea is to keep it as a transportation hub, but to build up and um, to use it for uh, housing and Retail. So this is six. This is tool, uh, and this is the um, an idea of what it would look like. You've got this pedestrian bridge now 
that is going to extend over tools. So it's going to connect what's on the other side, potentially. It could even take it over the tracks, maybe, and connect it to the warehouses on the, the north side of the tracks there. We'll see how that all comes together. But it will remain a transportation hub. You'll have your, your hub for the, for the bus station. Um, but uh, it will be um, uh, housing and uh, retail added into it. So that's what's happening in the central part of Tucson. If uh, you stay with us for the next series of videos, we'll look at some of the outlying areas, what's happening at the university, main gate, and what's going on, uh, Sunshine Mile, Mercado, and then one of my favorite places, Five Points. Those are an upcoming video series. If you want to stay in the know, these are some websites I recommend you check out. The uh, Downtown Tucson Partnerships Economic Development blog is fantastic. Uh, they do a great job of staying up to date with what's happening in the general area, not just downtown. Rianuevo.org has phenomenal information regarding the um, uh, the use of their funds and what they're what they are planning and, and uh, what they have accomplished. They are very transparent about where all their money has come from. It's a great place to check it out. One of my favorite sites in Tucson, the uh, Tucson Improvement and Beautification Org, AZ Tboaz.biz. A uh, gentleman that runs this, he scours county records, permits, all kinds of stuff, and comes up with uh, really uh, first-rate information about what's coming, not just to the urban core, but all around the metropolitan area. Uh, the website I'm very proud of, Life Along the Streetcar. This is uh, the collection of the, the shows that I've been doing since uh, 20, uh, I think it's 2017 at this point, right? Yeah, so I've been doing this show for some time. I've got 130-plus episodes recorded with the decision makers, the change makers, the people that are involved with so many of these efforts. Uh, and if you're looking for a history of of Tucson as far as cultural, social, and economic impact. This is a great place to get some of those informational uh, uh, pieces. And then the last one is my, my business page. I'm a, I'm a mortgage lender by trade, uh, and I do a lot with um, helping real estate agents develop their marketing brand, uh, to, uh, videos like this that we can custom for your audience. But if you have interest in working with us or learning more about what, the things that we offer, uh, check out tomstoolsforagents.com. Uh, I, I thank you. Um, please, you know, keep in mind, Lifelong Streetcar, Tucson Trolley Tours, uh, and the Heath team at Nova Home Loans.